What is small vessel disease of the brain? Small vessel disease of the brain, or SVD, also called CDSVD, or cerebral small vessel disease, is a medical condition that affects the small blood vessels in the brain. In medical circles, it is also known by several other names, such as white matter disease, chronic microvascular ischemic changes, white matter hyperintensities, age-related white matter changes, and leukoariosis. Moving forward in this video, we'll refer to this disease as SVD. The small blood vessels in the brain, also known as cerebral microvasculature, are responsible for supplying oxygen and nutrients to the brain tissue. In SVD, the walls of these small blood vessels become thickened and damaged, which can lead to reduced blood flow to the brain tissue. SVD is a common condition in older adults and is often associated with other health conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol levels. The risk of developing SVD can also increase with age, smoking, and a sedentary lifestyle. More on this later. In fact, if you're over 60 years old, chances are that there's a 95% probability that an MRI scan will show white matter changes in your brain. There's currently no cure for SVD, but there are ways to manage the condition and prevent its progression. What are the symptoms of small vessel disease of the brain? SVD can cause a range of symptoms that can vary depending on the severity of the condition. One of the most common symptoms of SVD is cognitive impairment, which can include difficulties with memory, attention, and decision making. These symptoms can initially be subtle but may worsen over time and impact daily activities. In some cases, SVD can lead to the development of vascular dementia, which can cause more severe cognitive symptoms. SVD can also cause problems with balance and coordination leading to gait disturbances and falls. This can be due to damage to the white matter of the brain which can affect the connections between different parts of the brain that are involved in motor function. In more severe cases, SVD can cause a stroke, resulting in sudden weakness or numbness on one side of the body, difficulty speaking, and vision changes. A stroke is a medical emergency and requires immediate attention. Other symptoms of SVD can include headaches, dizziness, and mood changes such as depression and anxiety. It is important to note that not everyone with SVD will experience all of these symptoms and some people may have no symptoms at all. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms or are concerned about your risk of developing SVD, it is important to talk to your healthcare provider. They can perform a thorough evaluation and recommend appropriate treatment options. If you like the content so far, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more great content on fascinating medical topics. Causes of SVD One of the most common risk factors for SVD is high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. Hypertension can damage the walls of the small blood vessels in the brain, causing them to become thickened and stiff. Over time, this can reduce blood flow to the brain tissue, leading to SVD. Diabetes is another risk factor for SVD. High blood sugar levels can cause damage to the blood vessels throughout the body, including those in the brain. This can lead to inflammation and thickening of the vessel walls, increasing the risk of SVD. High cholesterol levels can also contribute to the development of SVD. Elevated cholesterol levels can cause buildup of plaque in the blood vessels, reducing blood flow to the brain, and increasing the risk of SVD. Other medical conditions that can increase the risk of SVD include atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat, a history of smoking, and a family history of stroke or dementia. Lifestyle factors can also play a role in the development of SVD. A sedentary lifestyle, a diet high in saturated fats and processed foods, and excessive alcohol consumption can all contribute to the development of hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol levels thereby increasing the risk of SVD. Reducing the risk factors for SVD through lifestyle changes and management of underlying medical conditions 
can help to prevent or slow its progression. How is small vessel disease of the brain diagnosed and treated? Diagnosing and treating SVD typically involves a combination of medical history, physical examination, imaging tests, and treatment of underlying medical conditions. To diagnose SVD, your doctor may perform a physical examination to check for neurological symptoms such as cognitive impairment, difficulty with coordination, and gait disturbances. They may also review the patient's medical history and perform imaging tests such as MRIs or CT scans to look for signs of damage to the small blood vessels in the brain. Treatment for SVDs typically involves managing underlying medical conditions that can contribute to the development of the disease. As we've talked about with hypertension, it needs to be treated with medication to lower blood pressure, and diabetes may be managed with medication and lifestyle changes, such as a healthy diet and exercise. Antiplatelet medications such as aspirin may be used to prevent blood clots from forming in the damaged blood vessels of the brain. In addition to medical treatment, lifestyle changes may be recommended to manage SVD. These may include regular exercise, a healthy diet, quitting smoking, and reducing alcohol consumption. Diagnosing and treating SVD requires a multifaceted approach that involves identifying and managing underlying medical conditions, prescribing appropriate medications, and making lifestyle changes to reduce risk factors. In conclusion, SVD is a common condition that affects many people worldwide. The symptoms of this condition can be quite severe, but with proper diagnosis and treatment, many people are able to manage their symptoms and maintain their quality of life. If you suspect that you or someone you know may be suffering from SVD, be sure to speak with a qualified medical professional to get the help you need. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you found this video informative.